Elden Ring is undoubtedly one of the most divisive Souls-like games in terms of difficulty conversations. The near-infinite playstyle possibilities, bountiful busted builds, saturated summoning selections, <clears throat> mimic tier, and wandering wide world lead to a vastly different experience for every player. As someone who prefers pure strength, two-handing weapons, and no summons, player or spirit, I found some of the endgame opponents to be amongst the most challenging of the series. I don't personally like engaging too seriously with the difficulty conversation because, well, I feel like there's a limited amount of spicy commentary I can give without diving into the quality. We'll be covering your responses on quality in the next video. That's where that juicy meat of content is in my book. But this time, it's your turn to rank the difficulty. 500 of you voted on 43 select bosses. Yeah, exactly 500 by the way. Sure, this list isn't exhaustive. I didn't really want to include Tree Avatar 1, 2, 3, 4, Putrid, etc. I listed all the main bosses along with any that I was curious about your perspectives on. I'll be featuring your comments along the way, so let's dive straight into that sweet pool of Elden Ring content. Number 43, Mimic Tier. Listen, I don't know about you guys, but my Mimic Tier, now that guy's a chat. You would quiver in fear if you had to even consider the idea of fighting this, uh, well, he's dead. I think the concept of this boss was cool. If they had the health of a normal boss and no flasks, I think it would be better. It's the closest FromSoft has gotten to a custom boss, which is kind of cool. In my first attempt, I realized what the boss was, died on purpose, then came back naked with no weapon. That's indecent of you. Then equipped my weapon mid-fight. You could also do the opposite and take everything off after the boss spawns and it would be the hardest fight in the game. Again, I like the concept, but I can't ignore its lackluster difficulty. Summed up delightfully, Travisaurus. It definitely is underwhelming. Number 42, Fia's Champions. Okay, so none of you even commented on Fia's Champions. The first two, uh, phases are of course not a challenge, as it's a standard NPC battle where poise is about as existent as Sekiro's DLC. But what about, a uh, phase three? <laughs> Well, in theory, this is going to pose a challenge, as we've seen other triple NPC ganks. Oh my god, flashbacks. Oh, they haunt me. This can provide a spammy, ganky mess of combat. Well, some of these NPCs literally have no health and no poise. Like, I'm literally talking pinwheel here, so you can just stun lock and ass blast before they get a chance to do much. Number 41, Regal Ancestor Spirit. I think the deer is universally seen as an ambient, relaxing encounter, so I'm not surprised to see it this low on the list. Of course, that's part of the appeal of the encounter, so this isn't necessarily a knock on the quality. The soundtrack matches the ethereal atmosphere wonderfully, and although it's a memorable fight, it certainly shouldn't pose any serious threat compared to what's to come. Number 40, Sir Gideon Offnir, the all-knowing. I'll be interested in seeing how ones like Gideon and Renala rank, as their difficulty seems very dependent on the build. I've heard some people really struggle with Gideon, yet using inescapable frenzy on his starting speech one-shots him. Well, here's your answer, Mr. Moonray. It seems like the community has decided, and the all-powerful Poise God has spoken. Any boss that you can continually chain CC into oblivion before they can even fight back tends to rank lower on the list. Personally, I fought him without any gimmicks or buffs, and I kinda just ran the old man down and beat him with my oversized sword. Well, that sounds kinda weird out of context. Anyways. Although Gideon can pump out ungodly levels of damage if left unchecked, he rarely gets the opportunity to unleash his onslaught if you stay aggressive. Casters, yeah, you might have a different story. Number 39, Erdtree Burial Watchdog. I think during these rankings, we have to consider where in our playthrough we meet such opponents. Erdtree Burial Watchdog's bizarre attack timings and visual design certainly can throw off new, unassuming players, and the weird attack timings can be hard to master even after completing the game. The difficulty falters in the shortness of attack patterns, in my opinion. Sure, it can be hard to dodge some of the strikes, but rarely do I find myself scrambling to recover as a multi-hit combo sent me to 1 HP. They're perhaps more of a threat in your mind as you're trying to sleep rather than a boss to overcome. Jeez, these things are creep factories. Number 39, Leonine Misbegotten. I can't argue that compared to the onslaught of destruction to come, Leonine Misbegotten is not a top tier challenge. However, I think if you book it to Morn Castle, you're in for a world of hurt. This guy's fast and aggressive. Sure, you can stagger him, but his damage is insane. His combo's quick and long to match. I'm willing to say that most people that are putting him here probably faced him later in their playthrough. Certainly they become quite easier in the late game, but I won't forget the first encounter. Number 37, Flying Dragon Akil. 
It's clear that the amount of similar Flying Dragon bosses in the game left them forgettable, as again, there were no comments on the Flying Dragons. I think a lot of the early game fights are great tools in teaching you about new mechanics this game has to offer, and Akil's early placement is there to encourage the use of Torrent. After a few clunky deaths figuring out attack patterns and key bindings for Torrent, this dragon becomes easy as cake, especially considering there are like 10 more of them later on. Number 36, the Fell Twins. All right, these guys are more here for the quality ranking, as I personally found the Shroud of Darkness that engulfed us followed by a Wolnir style appearance appealing. I couldn't even remember who Wormface or the Fell Twins were. Okay, that's just rude, Leo. These guys went out of their way to ambush you and you couldn't even remember their names? Like, come on, show some respect. Because the twins take turns fighting you, it makes this fight unbelievably easy. It's basically just a regular omen enemy from the sewers that you've already probably faced at this point. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Number 35, Worm Face. Leo coming in with the heavy hitter that just doesn't stop. You know those really sad people that cry a lot and when they cry, all these black worms come out of their face and it kills you if you stay around them for too long? God, those guys are so annoying. In all seriousness, I think the shock of facing this enemy is more challenging than the boss itself. Sure, the hitbox is wonky. Sure, the death blight is an always present threat. And sure, the grab strings can be challenging to dodge, but the boss is kind of one note. Once you figure it out, you're golden. Number 34, Magma Worm Makar. Magma Worm is kind of like the weird charge mechanics from Gaping Dragon mixed with Quaylag and then they were brought into the Elden Ring gameplay setting. With the increased speed of your character, it's not hard to bob and weave your way to success. Sure, a lot of the attacks are difficult to get down the timing of perfectly, but does it really matter when the boss has some one-hit attack combos? Kind of a lumbering blumbering idiot if you ask me, but he's kind of lovable. Number 33, Renala, Queen of the Full Moon. First face is probably where this boss gets all of its difficulty lost. When the biggest danger of half of the fight is crippled school children half-heartedly throwing books at you, you know you've stumbled into my middle school memories. Wait, what? Renala herself, though, can legitimately one-shot you if you're not careful, although her attacks leave ample opportunities for punishment. A lot of the spectacle of this fight could scare players away from aggression, but I found it quite easy to ignore the summons of Phase 2 and just wail on her. Apparently the caster experience is a lot harder here, but as a Giga Chad strength man myself, I can't say I relate. Number 32, a Dragonkin Soldier of Noxtella. In more ways than one, this fight reminds me of Dark Beast Parl of Bloodborne. It's a beast using the cinematic qualities of lightning to beat you into submission, and it's kind of a level check. Because of Elden Ring's open world, I faced this boss unbelievably late in my playthrough and basically one-shot him. I also watched people come straight here and get booty blasted. He's not particularly hard to read, and becoming a crotch goblin as you spam away isn't too challenging, but he's nothing to scoff at either. Number 31, Red Wolf of Radagon. Whenever a boss turns into a regular enemy later, people seem to rate it a bit lower. This happened with Leonine, and it happened here. I think Red Wolf of Radagon, particularly to newer players in the series, poses an extreme and new challenge. Balancing fast-paced aggression, massive damage output, Multi-hit combos and magic spells all together in an exhilarating battle is a lot for a noob lit. Notes from a souls noob. Red Wolf is actually f***ing me. Dude, I can't dodge close range and range attacks at the same time. Bro, he throws two attacks and I'm dodging one as he's throwing another. Yeah, I never died to him, lol. It was close though. F*** you. Number 30, the spirit form of Godfrey, first Elden Lord. Yeah, I can't say I see this queso cover man any place else on this list. He's not a total pushover, particularly if you followed the main story linearly up to this point. On my first playthrough, I probably would have placed him a bit lower, but on my rune level 1 run, he definitely messed me up, almost as much as Morgoth did. The main reason he isn't too challenging is his single phase nature. It's only one phase to really learn, meaning once you learn those few attack patterns, you should be golden, like him. Number 29, Ulcerated Tree Spirit. Everyone I see complains about the camera. While I agree that new players should have access to a lock-on mechanic that functions to aid combat, as a veteran of the series, I have rarely ever remotely felt held back by camera functions. I can lock on and off as needed, and it all functions great. The Ulcerated Tree Spirit is one of the times where I can understand where people might struggle to see what's happening, 
but assuming you're fighting one in a more open area, it's impressive how they managed to make this fight function. Sure, it's not perfect to track, but the way it rides seemingly organically and frantically, yet I can still kind of read its moves, is quite impressive. I actually love fighting these enemies, and I find them a light challenge, though I would say they're more imposing in appearance than difficulty. I'd move them down a few spots, but can see with future rot variants why they'd end up here. Number 28, Tree Sentinel. Ah, the beginning of a toxic relationship. This moment will likely make or break the game for series rookies. There are countless negative reviews of the game where the playthrough ended short, and I'm willing to bet a huge amount of those came at the unwillingness or inability to learn beyond typical game structures. If a game places an enemy in front of you, usually it's assumed that you can beat it. While technically you can beat Tree Sentinel, on many starter classes, one hit will kill you. You heard me right, one. If you took this poll as a person who walked into the big, great world and instantly tried to fight this guy, this guy would probably be in the top 10. Thankfully, this game is not linear and you can go and do whatever you want and come back and one-shot him. Sweet, sweet revenge. Number 27, Ricard, Lord of Blasphemy. God, I want to talk about the quality so much here, but that's next time. So I faced Ricard way late because I didn't want to join Volcano Manor and forsake the Golden Order. And because of that, I had gone through another 20 or so level ups before coming back and I kind of one-shot this boss. Even so, I still died a few times and, and there are still some attacks that I don't know how to dodge. The first phase can be blasted through with some back steps out of the serpent's range, and counterattacks aren't hard with the talisman boosted jump attack. The difficulty clearly comes from phase 2, in which the combination of homing skulls, delayed swipes, poison, AoE, crazy music, and the descent of hell itself all overwhelm you into destruction. Not to mention how Rykard is constantly on the move, forcing you to reposition to avoid getting cornered. I think if I fought this earlier in the game, it's definitely doable, but a top 40% challenge of the game. When I fought it, not so much. Number 26, Loretta, Knight of the Halleck Tree. You faced so many enemies on horseback by the time you finally reached Loretta that I doubt she'll pose too strong of a threat. Her biggest obstacle is her insane damage output, which can one-shot you at almost any vigor if you're not careful. However, she can be bursted down relatively quickly, and she shouldn't have too many new tricks up her sleeve. You're no longer safe at range, which is perhaps a good switch up, but she's not more challenging than Renala in that department. Number 25, Soldier of Godric. You guys have got to be kidding me. Look at the responses here. They're literally all 10s or 1s. Do you guys think this is funny, trolling my poll like this? Soldier of Godric is the easiest 10 I have ever put on my list. And to think any of you would dare to put something lower is honestly despicable. You guys should be ashamed of yourselves. For me, it's Soldier of Godric, easily. With his spinning and slamming attacks, it took me about 200 tries overall. So satisfying to kill. I gave up after he one-shotted me in the ninth phase with the Abyssal Call. Nobody cares about his eighth phase, when he literally summons the Elden Beast and Melania. That phase was definitely the hardest for me. I still couldn't beat him to this day. This is definitely a battle of attrition, reflexes, attention, consumables, certainly a culmination of what they've achieved, and I'm genuinely disappointed to see him this low on the list. Be better. Number 24, Godric the Grafted. Personally, I'd move this man way down on the difficulty list. I suppose some of this is dependent on your exploring, but his combos are so slow and telegraphed, it makes him a borderline pushover after the intense challenge of Margit. Godric is my favorite in the whole game for me. He might not be the most challenging, but goddamn is he just a fun challenge in the early game. His design is great, and that phase transition cutscene is just insane. And how could I forget the music, which is just incredible all the way through. There's a reason why he was in so much of the promo material. He's just an all-round fantastic boss. Well thank you Luna884, I couldn't agree more. Number 23, Deathbird. This boss was such a shocking experience similar to the Fell Twins. Sure, it might not be the most fun fight mechanically, but the sheer disgust I felt upon looking at him for the first time was palpable. The challenge of this fight comes from the skinny boss hitbox, the lingering AoEs in later versions. All in all, with the overwhelming creepiness and aforementioned mechanics, it can be a tricky fight to master, but a reasonable one at that. Number 22, Astel, Natural Born of the Void. Similarly to Deathbird, there is an overwhelming component of creepiness to the fight that keeps you on your heels. 
I don't see this boss as an unbearable challenge for anyone, but it can also have hitbox issues and it can be difficult to read Estelle's movements at times. While it is difficult to dodge some of his moves, I found myself being able to tank many of the hits at the level I was at. Perhaps I faced the boss late or had an unreasonable level of vigor, but this boss didn't leave me scrambling for a moment of respite like any of our top 10. Number 21, Godskin Noble. To round out this video, we have Godskin Noble, a rotund oversized marble with the needles of a porcupine. It's interesting to see a boss utilize a rapier, but in phase two, the rapier goes bonkers, pulling out arena-sized thrusts. There's a preponderance of AoE attacks to cover the use of summons, and this is all without covering the Roll of Doom. This guy turns into Sanic and rolls his way straight up your anal cavity. Thankfully, you only have to fight one of them. Wait. There is a lot more commentary from you guys in the following video of the top 20 hardest bosses in the game, so I'll be sure to feature you guys way more. There were notably less comments on the easier bosses because you guys wanted to talk about the difficult ones. So be sure you subscribe, drop a like if you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned for the hardest bosses in the game. Check out my video ranking the hardest bosses of the series if you haven't seen that as well. Thank you for watching. Peace!